Three segments of multi-use path, three kilometers of beautiful coastline, and thousands of locals getting their quality time in. The Dallas Road Corridor is pretty awesome, but it could have been much worse. Stay tuned. First, we have to talk about sewage. Ever since settlers built suburbs in the region, Victoria was dumping shit into the water. We did screen out all the large things that you shouldn't flush in the first place. But, as the Taiyi pointed out, that doesn't stop pharmaceuticals and microplastics. The issue was so complex and controversial, it even had a mascot. In the end, the decision was to pipe everything over to an expensive new treatment plant in a squamult. It turns out, the biosolids are trucked all the way over to the mainland, so they can be burned for fuel. Alright then. I'm somewhat disappointed that actually recycling the water wasn't treated as an option. Anyways, now that we meet the bare minimum for sewage treatment like every other wealthy city, Mr. Floaty and his wife Plastic Bag Princess can retire in peace. As part of the CRD's massive undertaking, they added many amenities. And what better time to improve a street than when you have to dig it up for infrastructure upgrades? Well, we got a pathway, and it's better than the one in this illustration, which by the way is beautifully detailed. This person can do cars with shocking accuracy and landscapes and- <laughs> Let's get to the segments. The first leg is a relatively narrow two-way path and sidewalk along the newly reinforced breakwater. We said goodbye to the crumbling blue railings, got crossings, bike parking, fancy chairs, and some resilient landscaping. Speaking of parking, kept it The second leg is very wide, originally for the wrong reasons, which I will explain in a moment, but is now arguably the most inclusive segment where everyone can coexist. A few people freaked out about the plans to construct a high-speed cycle path along their precious coastline, destroying trees and mowing down pedestrians. Did that happen? Partially. We lost some vegetation but it had to be sacrificed for the pipe laying anyways. Some people still complain about the pathway being unsafe to walk on and inconvenient to cycle. In my personal experience, it's been fine. The odd two-wheeler definitely will ignore common courtesy and breeze people or fail to stop. But like with all cycling infrastructure, people behave much better over time. It's so busy on the weekend that if you're trying to get anywhere fast, you'll probably take an alternate route anyways. Sorry road bikers, this path is too inclusive for you. Now, starting at mile zero, the third- I intended to say segments, why am I saying legs? What has three legs? One of the dogs. Definitely one of the dogs. This area is very popular for dog walkers, and it's easy to see why. Heading along these wide expanses of grass to Clover Point, where sewage is no longer dumped. This segment was supposed to be bicycle only, but due to COVID, it was changed to a multi-use path. This was a very good call. Not only do people need the space to physically distance, which nobody's doing by the way, they would have used it anyways. The city might try to revert this in the summer, but it's pretty hard to go against human nature. Which brings us to the second stretch and its absurd origins. I wish my voice was like Adam something so I can complain about this stupidity in a more entertaining manner. It was paved wide, 
with the intention of splitting it into another narrow two-way bike path and sidewalk. If you have to put poles in the way, thick paint lines, and signs telling people which side to use, you know that the expected behavior is unnatural. As someone who had a voice within the city's transportation circles, I expressed my real concerns with this approach. In the end, the planners were smart enough to realize this would not work. They in fact ripped out poles that had already been installed and left both segments plain and simple. The signage isn't overkill. In fact, it doesn't even imply that you're supposed to use a particular side. Nice job, partner. In the end, this project we could definitely call a huge success. I wish I could show you how crowded it's gotten even on winter days. Here's some more footage from summer 2021 of Victorians from all walks of life enjoying the new, inclusive Dallas Road.